Uh, well, we are now uh, welcome to the weekly IPFS GUI and in web browsers weekly sync up call. Uh, this week's call is going to be focused on IPFS in web browsers. No, IPFS NPM. We want to put all the NPM packages on IPFS. Alex Procedes has been working on that for some time. In the background, Victor is working on related work to make an open registry. Um, so we're going to kick things off with uh, Alex, who's just going to give us a quick heads up on where he's at, like what his focus is today, and where he kind of sees it going, direction of travel. I know that like some new ideas have occurred to him in the last few weeks with GitHub announcing their package registry. Um, most interesting for the people on this call is like, we are hoping to release IPFS NPM with the IPFS desktop app. And the pl there's a PR from Enrique that, that does the, the boilerplate of making the command available. But what I wanted to spend some time on this call doing was just like figuring out what the distance between sh should we release it on the world today? My gut feeling is no, but I kind of want to like poll the people here present on what their feelings are and what just to try and pull together a, a short list of things that need to happen before we're ready to call IPFS NPM a thing. Um, so I've put a bunch of notes in the document, but people should feel free to add more. Let me share my screen with those notes on it so that anyone not familiar can talk about it. Uh, can someone volunteer to be a note taker, please? Da, 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 da. I can't see all your faces, so please holler. So, I can do it. Yay, thanks, Jim. Um, feel free to take notes in the relevant sections of the doc. Uh, so, we will talk about NPM on IPFS. Alex, do you want to jump in and tell us where you're at and what, what's next on your hit list? Sure. So NPM on IPFS, uh, there are two components to it. Uh, first is a mirror of the NPM public registry uh, that adds CIDs to all the various um, uh, packages that are available. So each, each package has a file uh, called a document that describes um, the versions that are available and the tables that make up those versions. So we just put a CID next to each table field. Uh, that is the CID that you would use to resolve the same table that you would use HTTP for normally. Um, so there's a process that listens to changes from NPM's database uh, for new modules that are coming in. And every time it sees a new module, it goes off, it um, downloads the table, adds it to IPFS, and then broadcasts the CID to uh, a bunch of registry mirrors and each mirror has its own copy of the registry uh, and, it, and it updates them using these CIDs that it receives. So that's a server side component. Then there's a client side component uh, that when you do an NPM install using it, so you can invoke this client side component and what it does is it spins up a, a web server and creates an IPFS node it configures your local copy of either NPM or YARN to use the web server that it just spun up instead of hitting the public registry. So when you start installing things, uh, it will make a request to this web server that you're running locally with a path that includes a package name. Um, when it receives the request for the package name, it looks up the document uh, in its local repo using the IPFS node that it spun up. If it doesn't have it, then it will go to our public registry, our copy of the registry. So download the document, add it to its local node, and then serve it back to the client. And then the next time it, it hits it, it will, it will check to see if it's been updated, but it will generally re uh, return it from the local repo. The client will then um, sort of feed that back to NPM. Or so, the, so the server will feed that back to the NPM client itself. Which will use the document to work out which table it wants uh, to download in order to satisfy the server version that the user has in their package JSON. It will then make a request to that table to our server that's running locally. 
the our command line component will then take that tarball, use it to look up uh, in its local repo, like in its MFS, if it has a, a CID for that tarball or not. If it doesn't have it, then again, it will hit the, the registry to, to work out that CID, um, which is odd if that happens because you've just downloaded the document that has all the CIDs. Anyway, it's possible that it happened in between updates or whatever. Um, so anyway, so if it doesn't have that uh, CID, it will go and get it. If it does have the CID, then it will use IPFS to resolve the tarball and stream that back to the client. The client, in this case, being NPM, which then goes, oh, cool, I got a tarball from somewhere. Great, unpacks it, puts it on the disk. And it will just repeat that process for every single dependency that it needs to install. Any questions so far? Some, but more like, okay, that sounds interesting. The um. But the key piece of the puzzle are we are running a service that is lazy mirroring NPM's registry. That's piece one, a, set, a centralized piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Then piece two is, is two parts of the, the thing that the developer runs on their machine, the CLI tool. One is this local HTTP server. So you run a registry proxy on a local host, on, on local host. And the CLI does the work of spinning up a local local proxy and then proxying other commands through to NPM. Where what's the, the flow of yeah so if uh, if the client if, if Yarn or, or the NPM client that we're using make requests that aren't for Packments or for tables, then it just forwards them straight on to the public NPM registry. So if you were to do something like log in or change your password or publish something or whatever, all that traffic goes straight to NPM. We don't we don't send it to our servers at all. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we're really interested in is packments and tarball requests. Does that, does that make sense? Um, that does make sense. Uh, does anyone else? Does it make sense to? People here present. Some sense. Enough. Enough to be doing this. Okay. So, so then the next piece of it is where? What is? Where's your head at with it? Are you, you're as far as I'm aware, you're focused on performance improvements and refactoring in JS IPFS. Yeah. So there was a problem with um, uh, with the NPM IPFS client whereby you. Uh, so the whole, the whole of NPM is represented as a massive ham shard. Um, so you can copy that into your local repo, but obviously you don't want to copy the whole thing because it's enormous. But all you really need to do is copy the root node of the shard, which is one DAG node and should be super quick. Um, and it turned out there was a bug in uh, the Unix FS exporter, I think. Uh, it's so long ago now. Oh, all I can see is async await refactoring. Anyway, so it was um, there was a bug and it was trying to pull down the entire shard, which obviously you don't want to do. All you need to do is pull down one node because when you um, uh, when you try and resolve a document, it will say, right, well, you want this module with this name. So it will look in the shard and it will go, right, well, that is going to be on this branch. Cool, it's not there. Right, that branch. Cool, right, that branch. And then you get it. So you've done you know, the maximum, like whatever, like four traverses, which is four nodes that you load instead of loading the entire shard and then going, well, is it this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one. Um, so there was like, the exporter is clever enough to not load the whole shard, but I think it was, there was a plug in MFS that wasn't, it was triggering the wrong behavior for that. Anyway, so I was trying to fix the whole thing. I fixed it, but I grew very tired of looking at pool streams um, because they just seem to make everything really convoluted and hard to follow and we have this async await refactor coming out i was like well, why don't i just like refactor this all to async await cool uh yeah that was a bit of scope creep um anyway so i fixed the bug it got really fast um but then i obviously need to do the rest of the work to actually ship the fix uh, and that's been me for the last like three weeks just doing async await refactoring of all the files related stuff in the interplanetary file system uh, which is like, yeah, super tedious. Um, I think that's, that's good. It's better to go and fix stuff in the core than to work around it outside of the core. Yes. You have Absolutely. access to both sides. Yeah, there's applause there from Dietrich. 
absolutely. And the good news is it's getting faster. Like it's much faster now than it was. I, I was refactoring the trickle tag, and uh, yeah, so the the previous implementation in order to like add an interrupt test for a big file and the previous implementation was taking about 78 seconds to return the wrong CID. Whereas the current, like the async await one is taking about three and a half seconds to return the wrong CID, uh, which is cool. I mean, like it will shortly return the right CID. <laughs> that sounds even better. Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, so then the, the question becomes, so that you're, the refactor, notwithstanding being useful work, you're you imagining that your head will be out of that next week? Yep. And then with that in place, do, do you, are you too deep to say what you would be doing next? Like, do you know what your next few steps are for? Uh, so something that's interesting uh, is the, uh, when this service on our server that receives a new NPM module and says, oh, here's the toggle, great, get that. Here's this, and then broadcast the CIDs to all the mirrors. Uh, so that it does that via PubStub, uh, which is fine, except for PubStub doesn't sign the messages. So we have these uh, registry mirrors that are like, yeah, cool, that's a CID. That sounds legit. Um, and uh, yeah, it will it will just like take that CID and stick it in the registry, uh, just accepting the fact that it's received a message that the peer ID that it comes from claims to be from the replication master, um, but it turns out that nothing actually signs these pub sub messages, so I don't trust that mirror anymore um, because it's entirely possible to poison it with. Uh, spoofed messages. So the, the client is clever enough to um, it will like standard client, sorry, NPM standard behavior. Uh, the document has uh, like hashes of all the, the tables um, and it should in theory validate the table it just downloaded against that hash. But of course it got the hash from the document which it got from us. So we don't change the hashes in the, the document. So it's not, that's not vulnerable to the, the pub sub problem, just the CID. Um, and our NPM and IPFS client does actually validate what, like it, it validates the table that it got from the IPFS hash against the, the SHA hash that came from the document. So in theory, like the worst case scenario is that you would end up downloading a bunch of things that aren't what you wanted and then going to the public registry and get it from there instead. So the, the worst case scenario is that the download becomes slower. Like at no point do you actually not get what you asked for. You just might download two things instead of one thing. Tedious. But anyway, so once, once the async weight refactor is done and once uh, PubSub is signing its messages, which Jacob says is coming soon, then I want to recreate the, um, the registry mirror uh, because that's the only way we can really guarantee that we haven't got a bunch of poison mirrors at the moment. That sounds that sounds wise, although the threat seems pretty low given what you just said, but good housekeeping. Yeah, quite. Um, um, there's also a bug in IPFS, JS IPFS 34 around ham shards uh, that mean that it's possible to generate an invalid ham shard um, which is fixed in 35, so the, the, the registry is only regenerating anyway. Mm -hmm. But this might all be moot. Um, so Oli alluded to the kind of things I've been thinking about in the interim, what with GitHub's recent announcement. So like, so seeking into that, like if the bright future of like JavaScript registries is some kind of, you know, federated set of all gardens, then like all our all our mirror does is mirror npm. Um, so if tomorrow somebody publishes their hot new module to uh, GitHub, you'll never see it via our registry. Um, you know, which is a bit of a shame. And considering we're all about the distributed web, to kind of have this centralized service, which is a mirror of another centralized service, it doesn't really, you know, we're not really walking the walk, um, which is a shame. So. Uh, as part of like trying to make it so that we wouldn't actually need to have this um, separate client component for NPM and IPFS, I submitted a pull request to uh, to Pakoto, which is I'm probably saying it wrong, 
uh, it's it's a module that npm uses to basically choose like to, to download modules uh, from 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 some place so when someone from npm talks about uh, npm supporting multiple transports it happens in in Pakota. Um, so I added, so I created a pull request to Pakote that adds support for uh, IPFS hashes and IPNS names, and using that in your package JSON to resolve a, um, a pacumen or a tarball, which is, you know, kind of fun, right? Yeah. So there we go. Thanks, Ollie. Ollie just put uh, the link in the chat to that PR. Um, <clears throat> so I used uh, the URLs like IPFS colon hash, IPFS colon slash slash hash, or IPNS colon slash slash IPNS name, and then got nerd sniped on that PR by somebody saying, well, actually, you should look at this enormous uh, issue here where we decided the correct ways of representing things as URLs. Um, but it's kind of, it uses the protocol FS colon, which seems a little presumptuous to kind of like land grab all of the FS protocol. Um, I, I, I mean, it might be technically correct, but I doubt we'll ever get that merged. Um, so yeah, I don't know, ongoing conversation there. But what I would like to do is kind of go back to that PR and kind of refactor it so that instead of having um, all the code for uh, like the IPFS and the IPNS, like protocol handlers in Pakota itself, having it just be like an external module that you would install. So you do something like, you know, npm install dash g. Oh, hello. Got idle, you got a question? Uh, just like quick clarification regarding the FS. I'm quite sure it's very old discussion and we had much newer discussions on the topic. So I am probably uh, jump into that issue and uh, clarify. Strongly agree. I'm pretty sure that FS stuff is old, old, old news and has been superseded with IPFS colon, IPNS colon. Quite, yeah, I mean, the issue itself is like four years old or something, so I'm not surprised we've changed our minds since. Anywho. Anyway, um, yeah, anyway, so, so having an external module, so you would do something like npm install dash g, npm dash transport dash IPFS, and then that would, you know, create, that would put a module in your system that Pakete would be able to resolve to say, all oh, right, cool, well, you've said IPFS colon slash slash blah. I'm just going to hand it off to this transport module and let the transport module work out what it is. Um, that would be cool. And then we, because that actually gives like us control of publishing updates to the protocol handler rather than having to get PRs measured to the case. Anyway, that's um, oh, a question. Uh, it's still not clear to me what the user facing change is that you're proposing. Like it's, it, you're saying like IPFS colon slash slash URLs in like like you would a GitHub URL, a Git URL? Or a... Uh, so if you say IPFS colon slash slash hash, then you're pointing directly to a tarball. So it's like pointing to a zip file somewhere. Right. If you say IPNS colon slash slash, then the IPNS name should resolve to a document, which means that you can publish things. It means that you can update things, which is the interesting user facing part. Because uh, if you can publish your own documents uh, on IPNS, then you have no centralized registry anymore. Exactly. So at that point, we have this registry uh, mirror. Well, we have this URL at the moment, this uh, registry.js.ipfs.io. Um, that at the moment is this uh, mirror of NPM with added CIB crunchiness. Uh, but if instead it was some kind of portal search engine thing to be able to find modules that were published using IPNS names, uh, now that would be quite quite a thing. So we could um, keep our uh, little server-side process that's watching for new versions incoming from NPM and use that to publish IPNS names so that we've got some modules available straight away. Uh, but then we can also have one that's taking things that come from GitHub and publish IPNS names from that and take them from everywhere. And then if people, if there's some way of people submitting their own IPNS names of their own modules that they're publishing, then uh, yeah, I mean, suddenly everything is distributed. How is it on the, on the continuum of like, this is an exciting idea that I've had to like, this is something we could implement in a few months of work. 
<laughs> the thing is, it all ignores the fact that IPNS at the moment is so slow that it's pretty much unusable. Yeah. Um, so I, I put a video in the Slack channel a while ago with me demoing IPNS, like resolving packments over IPNS. Uh, 30 seconds per dependency. So Hugo was demoing his upgrades to IPNS using DNS and other miscellaneous tricks. Um, so I think we can, I mean, there is a future when IPNS is quick, assuming an online, assuming you have connections to centralized services and DNS resolvers. Right. Well, you know, in that case, uh, but oh. is it uh, is there an issue where you've written up your thoughts on this yet? Is that something we can? It's do? something I'm going to do as soon as I finish this async away refactor. <laughs> okay, well, don't forget while you're in on the refactor tractor. Cool. Um, I guess so. I do want to spend some time talking about just the basic UX of the PFS NPM as it is today, and like defining what we think needs to happen. But given that you're talking about multi-registry stuff, it might be interesting to hear from Victor, because Victor's got some cool project that seems relevant to this. Sure. Um, before we move on, uh, in general, with the multi-registry stuff that we're talking about, and, and together with the new package registry, I think together we can come up with a way to refer to the different paths that the registries have as npm has a global uh, scope now and they also have the the namespaces for themselves but now we have github as well where you have the github username and the github project and, and so on in the future there will be more registries but there is still no unified way of, of referring to these packages right so maybe some multi-format needs to be invented where you can refer to packages in the in the different registry anyways so um, about open registry, um, the the main idea is well, I guess a, a better start is to focus on the on the fear, right? So the fear is that there is a few entities owning the infrastructure that we as open source developers are relying on. Uh, open registry is part of a of a bigger bigger effort to create open infrastructure, something that I call open services. Uh, the main point is to have it funded by the community, developed by the community, and owned by the community itself. So, for example, the NPM registry currently is owned by a, a company called NPM Inc. Once they run out of funding or they don't find a way of financing themselves, we don't know what happens with the registry. They don't seem to have a plan what happened in case of a shutdown and, and Moving on from this, there is always the fear that the registry will eventually disappear. Um, so open services kind of paints up like a, a framework for what happens when it shuts down, how can the user export their data, how will the service finance itself, and all of this data should be, should be public. Um, so compared to NPM on IPFS, basically the same thing, except it's developed by the community rather than being financed by a for-profit company in this case being protocol app. Um, so I think today, MPN on MyPFS, unless the license have changed, it's owned by David Diaz. Eventually it will probably move to be owned by protocol app or maybe an IPFS foundation in the future. Right now it's a private company developing, developing the, the tools for doing this. My fear is that once the funding, if the funding runs out, the, the development will stop, even though people are interested in, in contributing to it. So the, the, the whole point of open services, basically set up a framework, uh, which you can see in the open services uh, repository that I've linked in the, in, the, in the notes for this call. And basically just set up some guidelines that, that expenses and income should be, should be public, all the, all the work that is happening should be public, the conversations should be public, the metrics should be public, the infrastructure, everything should be public and the community should be able to involve themselves in, in all parts of development, not just in using the software in the end. So that's like the overview. Um, 
but it's mainly focused on the, right now the, the project is relatively new and I am focusing on the governance of the project. Not as much on the technology because the technology is easy compared to setting up the project in a way to have a, a long-term stability. There's a question from Alex. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, have you got in touch with the Node Foundation? Because, uh, you know, they're kind of the guardians of a lot of similar uh, uh, kind of stuff. I, I, I think they're called OpenJS nowadays or something like that. Uh, the plan is eventually to start contacting either the Linux Foundation, which I understand OpenJS to be a part of. Uh, but right now, there I've only had conversation with like Isaac and, and other people about it. I haven't made any concrete steps towards it. Um, the I think Open Registry right now is an experiment to see if we can have self-sustainable infrastructure projects as that does not exist today. Um, and then if everything goes well, we can find another like custodian of the project as long as it follows the same framework. Um, but yeah. Yeah, is it the case that Open Registry uses IPFS under the hood currently? Yeah. Is that? Uh, yeah. So the first the first part of Open Registry is the like the API backend, uh, which runs in a on a dedicated server. Every time a request comes in, it downloads the package package and, and adds it to IPFS. So it's a it's a lazy registry. Uh, but then similar to NPM on IPFS, there is a second CLI utility called Bolivar, uh, which basically does the same as the NPM on IPFS, just written in, in Golang instead of Node. Uh, and it connects directly to the open registry IPFS node, and it pulls down packages via that instead and starts sharing it on, on your local network and other, other peers. Nice. Um... It sounds like there's a lot of overlap between the two efforts. And, and we've spoken about this offline, but um, so like short term, we have a, a goal to release the uh, IPFS NPM command line tool as an opt-in experiment. So you install IPFS desktop and there's a new piece of UI that's like, oh, this is a, if you use NPM, this is an experiment you could opt into have it monkey around with your path so that we deploy the, uh, the command line is now available to you, uh, the CLI is available. And uh, the feeling right now is that given some of the, uh, so it's, it's like an order of magnitude slower than NPM today. <clears throat> so I think at, at this moment, we have to be fairly realistic that it's, it's kind of an experiment that we're encouraging IPFS like users, people who are keen on decentralization, we want them to try this out, to get feedback and to, to help us focus performance improvement work in IPFS. But it doesn't seem, it seems like something that we're gonna have a tough job selling to the average developer who isn't interested in decentralization. Um, given that we're at the ask, it's like, where installing module took 10 seconds, now takes 40 seconds. Yeah, big time, go for it. So I, uh, I had the same experience with the NPM on IPFS, but I'm pretty sure that's an implementation specific issue regarding the performance. Bolivar, the, the proxy I've been writing, is always faster than, than me downloading via HTTP. So I'm pretty sure you will find one, one or two issues where you can raise the performance just because something silly is happening. It's not something that I've seen in the Golang ecosystem of, of LibPHP, that same performance issue. That is good to know. Okay. Um, so in the, in, the sh in the short term, we're gonna be releasing it as we have it, notwithstanding some incredible performance improvements. Um, if it is released with IPFS desktop, it's going to be configured to use a Go IPFS uh, daemon under the under the hood anyway. So that might change things, although we haven't tested that configuration. Um, but it feels like longer term. So this is kind of in the next two months. We're in a position where we could release it like next week. But the other purpose of this call is to kind of chat to people who have tried it out and see like what they think is the bare minimum like what can we tag as a release and say, this is worth experiment, like 
throwing out to the users and experimenting with and what kind of feedback are we looking for like what's what is the purpose of this endeavor i guess we're still at like level zero um so i'm looking at jessica Schilling, smiling on that because i know this is this is where she's like guys have you thought about why you're doing this I'm like well that's why i'm having this call um so so but also to touch on like it's really interesting to I kind of knew that there were similarities between IPFS NPM and Open Registry, but I didn't realize how similar they were. So it's, it feels like longer term, we should be looking to, like it's, there's, there's a huge amount of value in us just stress testing IPFS and making those performance improvements. But it seems like for this project to have more long-term benefit to the community and have a life beyond that, it seems like we should be looking at how it merges in with your plans for Open Registry. Or at least that would be a very kind of useful, like stuff that we produce should be really useful for you, if not directly working together. I do. For sure, for sure. I, I, um, I think it's, it's worth stressing NPM on IPFS is focused on NPM, right? The JavaScript ecosystem, while uh, Open Registry does not have the same limitations, it will be a, a universal package registry. At least that's where, where we are heading right now. Ah, so I understood uh, from the messaging on the website today, it says it's going to focus on JS. Is that just? <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. The, the first focus, obviously, is to like regain the control of the private registries. So like Docker and packages and NPM, uh, essentially like registries run by private companies. Uh, the first one, since I have the most experience with NPM, was NPM, and the website was made to reflect the current state, not the future state of the program. That is wise. Um, okay, well, I, I think now is a good point to move on to the more interactive segment, which is, doo -doo 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 -doo. Well, I, I've pulled together this list of things that I can see um, that we need to tackle before before we offer this up to users as something that we say is good and useful. Um, so I can just whip through that real quickly. Like the, the, the overarching thing is we've got a, a goal for this quarter, which is to get this into people's hands and start getting feedback. But I, I still don't have a clear idea of whether it's, whether we intend to support uh, NPM on IPFS long-term as a service or whether this is actually uh, you know, a, a useful experiment for stress testing IPFS. But I don't know if we, we assembled have the answers for that, but um, it's worth reminding ourselves that we don't know that yet. Uh, if we do know that, someone should tell me. Uh, so, that, so the big one is speed. And I think Alex has said this a hundred times. Uh, it's gonna be challenging, but um, if what uh, Victor is saying is true, then clearly there is some hope there. Uh, also, we need to do a lot of work around testing. I think one of the, like, what are the benefits? What is the, the suggestion of using this? One of them is there are now options of pulling modules from my peers, from my coworkers. I'm in an office full of developers and we're all working on the same project and installs should be lab local to my lab. They shouldn't have to go outside the network. So. I think we need to do some testing to make sure that that is the case that like, I just haven't seen it I haven't seen it in action. Um, and there were some reports on the, uh, Pakoti pull request that suggesting that the speed of like IPFS already has a table and it wasn't much faster than if any, uh, there was some question about whether local LAN IPFS connection fetching a table was about the same speed as an HTTP request to the NPM registry, which sounded unfortunate. Um, so I think we have a big challenge around speed today, but it, it sounds like a lot of that can be, is gonna get better based on Victor's, Victor's findings. Uh, the other blocker we have is registry stability. As far as I'm aware, you, you've kind of got an open issue with infra that is, uh, please, please, can we have a more stable centralized registry proxy? And there is a big thumbs up. Yes, you will get it, but no timeline as yet. 
So they're um, going to set me up with an account so I can deploy it onto an ECS customer. So that is good. Yeah. Um, which means that you'll be at the point, pointy end of sysadminning it. That's fine. I don't mind that. Um, I just mind that. I, I just I just want it to be stable and yep. deployable and repeatable and all that. And at the moment, it's not. It's just running on a a big ECS uh, sorry, a big EC2 box somewhere, which is not not ideal at all. But I think yeah, they've kind of realised that they're not going to have time to do it themselves, so they're just going to give me the keys to do it myself. Which is great. That sounds good. I mean, you will you will learn all the details that way, and that that's going to be useful. Um, okay, so that block. Do you know when that's going to happen? Soon. Soon. <laughs> Soon. Um, I mean, yeah. Erin said two days ago. She said it would be yesterday. Okay. Um, so then, then it's back to like what are what's the benefits of using this over npm it's, uh, for me it's always like the thing that gets me most excited is like i can co-host the things that i depend on that seems to be uh, for me like if it's slow i can deal with it if there's some value to it being slow um but i'm struggling at the moment to find a way of presenting that back to users beyond saying like hey Good work. You did the right thing. You are co-host co-hosting your modules. Uh, I can't see a good way today of being able to tell the user uh, how much good work they're doing, just because of the lack of an API for being able to give bandwidths per CID. But um, uh, is anyone like Alex? Have you had any thoughts about that? Anyone got any like well? How do we present to the user like the value of using this tool? I guess is the question. What about the security implementations of it? The fact that you so the you know, the verifiability is is interesting, but the current implementation of npm does verify shards. So it, it's it's a nice feature of IPFS, but it isn't bringing anything new to npm. So. There's two things. Like the first thing is that they can turn their internet connection up and it will still work. And the other thing is there's no possibility of a left pad incident because everything on the you know, on my is forever. Mm -hmm. You know. So if I mean NPM could remove uh, a version from a document, but we don't remove versions from our mirror. So it'll always be that. Um, the GitHub registry apparently and you're saying that they're going to have some kind of automated blocking thing where if you get a vulnerability published uh they will just yank your package um until it's resolved in one way or another which you know obviously if I, and that, that uh, will apply to all your dev dependencies and all that kind of stuff which you know typically you don't really care that much about vulnerabilities unless it's like steering stealing your like cryptocurrency wallet or something like that but then you know you get these vulnerabilities that are like this tool lets you add arguments to the command line even though you know the tool is for adding arguments to the command line and that kind of thing so you know like those automated error like those automated vulnerability reports that turn out to be false will affect them but it won't affect anybody using npm and ipfs but it's it's i don't think that's a good thing necessarily to say this is so much better because it's like saying this is better because it's not as bad as this thing which is not a great way to sell anything uh, yeah, I wouldn't frame it quite like that, but sure. Um, I don't work in marketing. I've got no idea how to frame it. Jim? So, um, oh, okay. Um, I think like there's the sort of altruistic aspect where, hey, I'm, I'm providing some bandwidth. I'm helping host this thing. But I think that it's, it's not even just altruistic. I think it's like, you know, there's people, I, I just went to the CSV con. Uh, conference in Portland where, where it's all scientists and they're doing research and reproducibility and it's a hard requirement for them that they need to be able to uh, have their data published and that the software tools that they use that goes along with the research and have it be reproducible by other scientists so they can build on their data and cite their data and so um, a lot a large part of this is um, sustainability and prevention of software collapse 
um, which is what happens when uh, NPM goes offline, which probably won't happen, but you know, um, but also, you know, um, like this, this is for um, software, but it packet packaging can also be used around data sets. And with data sets, there's problem where there's just not a lot of people using, you know, a brain imaging scan or something like that. And they, they need this ability to organize amongst themselves um, long-term storage in multiple things. And, you know, this institutional lose uh, funding and, um, but that needs to be surfaced to the UI somewhere. Like it, it's really, you know, people have to right now organize offline to um, say, oh, let's have so many copies of this. Mm. And with the centralized thing, you know, this didn't do that at all. So. so how would, so the value out there is like, I've downloaded, th this is my dependency tree for this app. And I now have it all in IPFS. So I have a root CID for that particular tree of dependencies. Yeah, I mean, and it's then I, I need some way of sharing that root CID with like, I need to be able to like pin that to some other node so that that particular snapshot is forever available. Yeah, I, I mean, it's sort of a collaborative pinning type of thing where um, they're actively like it, there's uh, groups of people banding together to actively make sure that data or, or packages stay alive into the future mm -hmm. and make sure and i think like being able to see like health indicators as to how many replicas are out there and um and then you know if that there's already a million people like uh, mirroring a particular um package that might be good to have more people in it for latency but you know that, that that's not necessary not necessary for keeping the data alive in the future but for very small um you know if you're publishing a, a say a, a module and you don't want to use npm um you know and it's a very niche sort of thing um and you're doing it in a decentralized manner um you're going to need some other people to keep that module alive um, um. Is that, that sounds like something that we need to message in, if not in the CLI, then certainly IPFS desktop could talk about it, but I don't, because you're sort of talking about modules, individual modules and preserving them forever. Whereas I'm thinking about the dev user story of I've installed desktop and now I have this new tool. Why, why would I use it? <laughs> um, so there's a story around, okay, your, your depth tree is now represented by a single CID, which is kind of cool. Sounds like better than a package lock dot JSON. That's an improvement. But like you might want to use these decentralized tools because you want to provide some sustainability to a piece of software that hasn't been published on a central registry. Mm -hmm. Ooh, decentralized publishing is probably a little way beyond us in this ne in the next two months. Um, but for sure, the the messaging should include these ideals. Um, next up, uh, so then we've got more simple stuff like uh, there has been a lot of thought as to which emojis should go into the uh, IPFS NPM CLI. Um, but I think there's just a, this, this one is low hanging fruit just to tidy up the output so that it's a bit more approachable. Um, the current implementation follows the format of how NPM likes to announce every single HTTP request it's doing back in the day. Um, that feels like something that we could collapse away, but I don't, Alex, have you got any opinions on the current output? Like, I don't know why it is the way it is, and maybe there are some good reasons. 
I mean, it's because Alan wanted to see CIPs flying past as he was installing stuff. That's oh, crazy. no. Okay. Alan. I, I am aware that Alan has his NPM logging set to maximum so that he can see every HTTP request that he's making. I think for most people, that's probably more noise than information. You forget Alan is Neo. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> To play devil's advocate on that, if we are struggling with speed issues, the more random things you can flash across your terminal, the more it looks like things are happening. Right. I guess. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a good pattern, just saying. So, just saying. It's definitely doing something. Okay. Uh, and then there's, yeah, there's a few simple ones, like uh, we invoke IPFS for commands that don't need it. And we don't invoke IPFS for commands that do need it. So they seem like small things that we could fix before releasing. Um, then there's the kind of usability question of should, uh, should IPFS NPM wrap NPM more transparently? Like should, should you alias IPFS NPM to be your NPM so that you actually remember to use it? I figure if it's a separate command, It'll be something that you try once and then forget. Whereas if it is your NPM, then you just use it all the time. Question. Uh, throwing out a suggestion that is probably a horrible suggestion would make us deeply, deeply unpopular. But um, by having it alias out, so say you install the desktop client and it aliases out NPM as a default, interesting just to see how many people notice and see how many people notice the change in speed i mean i'm not saying no. that's not saying that's a good idea but it would be very very interesting to see they I, was, would. I mean i was kind of of the mind that if we tidy up the logging output and you're installing this it deliberately and this flow would be you've installed desktop and it's offered you would you like me to upgrade your NPM with IPFS skills. Like my feeling was when I first heard about it, the first thing I did was alias IPFS NPM to be NPM so that I would just not forget to use it. Um, at the time, the registry was even more unreliable. So I quickly had to stop doing that because I couldn't actually do any dev work. But it was what it was the approach that I kind of instinctively went for. So then it was the approach I suggested that we go for with desktop, but I just wanted to sanity check it with people. Like there is, it's, it can easily cause offense if you go and mess with people's paths. But I think if, if you've toggled a big switch in a UI that said, please make my NPM IPFSE. Would that work with other tools such as like, I regularly switch between node versions and have different versions of NPM using NVM and then if I switch between two, then that would rewrite that again and again. It would get pickled. So it's like, if would we have to monitor that and constantly switch back, would that cause more issues? Um, we, we end up in a world of conflicts between multiple is, management tools. That is likely to cause issues, certainly with the current one. Andrew Nesbitt. Um, MVM and related switchers use like a shim that will essentially run a program to see what version of a thing am I on. Um, so you, you're not actually changing the direct path to NPM every time that you switch. Uh, so it, it shouldn't cause too many problems. Obviously, like crazy people do crazy things. Uh, and there are always going to be edge cases. Uh, I guess like maybe it's worth trying to build something and seeing if a selection of protocol people, it, like, does it work for them? Mm -hmm. uh, before shipping anything would be like, there's at least 10 different ways that people run their terminals um, would quickly work out if that's gonna, which way is it gonna break? Uh, just as a quick, put your hand up vote, who would prefer it to become the default? If you use NPM and you opted this in, would you like this to be NPM with IPFS or would you like it to be a separate command? So hands up for NPM. One, two, three. Hands up for oh, four, five. Hands up for separate command. One, two, three. Question. 
Yeah, so that's pretty split, 50-50, and a question and some abstain. Uh, yeah, so question. So say, you know, so say we default that in, what about the viability of, you know, you're sitting there, you're sitting there looking at your terminal window and you're installing a package and it's taking forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And then you know, maybe the fallback on that is to have a reminder in the CLI that this is, hey, if this is taking forever and this is making you angry, you can, you can temporarily on, on IPFS goodness your NPM by doing this. <laughs> Don't press the speed boost button. Yeah, right. Stop, yeah. keep, don't press it. Exactly, no. exactly. This is, this is how you do it. We'll, just we'll be like, sad. But... Just like burning fossil fuels. It's yeah. unsustainable. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so this is something, this is a recurring problem, of, like the performance issue. So Companion had to put the toggle in. So it's like, can you ask Companion to stop doing what Companion does because it's slowing down the browsing experience? Um, <laughs> ludicrous mode would be good. But yeah, that might be the that might be the way. I can't immediately envisage what that would look like, but um it's that is something to consider. Uh certainly from the UI side of things, the des desktop is gonna have a toggle and it should be visible. Eric, I don't know if you've got any time to to sketch out any ideas on that. Maybe it's way too soon, but we talked about this like yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, and in the context of a broader like lump of experiments, this is one. Mm. This is one experiment. Like some, do you? Uh, uh, gosh, let's see. So we were we were suggesting that um, if there would be some feature in the UI of desktop that lets you enable various IPFS experiments, and that NPM and IPFS is one, there will probably be more. Right. So, and and I thought perhaps it could be. Uh, you know, when you, when you launch the UI, it, uh, it gives you uh, a notification, you know, it, it, it asks you whether or not you want to, you know, whether we, you know, we've got an experiment or it's been installed, you know, maybe it says it's been installed at, at any, at any rate, it's surfacing what's going on because this is such an experimental, you know, IPFS experimental thing. So it lets them know, Hey, we have this IPM on it, um, IP, uh, we have NPM on it, IPFS running, and then an, an option to, uh, you know, click over to, to see what that's all about. Um, but in terms of configuring it on an ongoing basis, I think maybe it's in the settings and, you know, you can either ask before installing or automatically install these in experiments. Um, and maybe the toggles are there as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is this would this be the first use of an experimental feature in desktop? Or do we have others? So uh IPFS has a bunch of experimental features that are currently the only way desktop surfaces them is by letting you edit the config. So yes, there is um <clears throat> there's long been desires and screen suggestions of like all of these um toggleable features should be represented as something toggleable in the UI. Yeah, this, this might be the time to do that. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, questions in the chat were, does desktop have a CLI? Um, no, the next release of desktop is gonna make IPFS um, CLI available on your path, but that'll just mean that if you didn't have IPFS on the, on the command line before, now you do, but it doesn't have its own extension command line, but I think it could. Lytle, what do you reckon? IPFS desktop as a command line tool? Uh, <laughs> just saying it out loud sounds stupid, but it could just work. Honestly, uh, Chrome and Firefox are GUI applications, and but you can a... customize a lot of uh, behavior yeah. uh, by adding like uh, command line toggles and switches, mm -hmm. and you can create aliases that run predefined pr pr profiles. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I'm... I see. I see no reason not to. It's it's kind of just more work at this stage. Like it's not the main show, but uh, it doesn't seem like it would offend anyone and isn't going to be a huge chore. So we should add it, Chris. The benefit I feel with that would be our custom install distribution. So we'll be able to basically install it on a version that could be like already set up with MPM and IPFS configured and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the opportunity we have. 
Uh, Jim says, will it work with Yarn? Uh, will NPM IPFS work with Yarn? Is that the question, Jim? That, uh, that, that particular command line tool already wraps whichever one it finds. Uh, yeah, I just, it was just questioning if it worked yeah, yeah, yeah. already, so yeah. Um, IPFS. Yeah, so there's, um, there's a package, dash dash package dash manager option that you can pass that can be the NPM or Yarn. It's basically the command that it will use. Uh, which you can also set in a configuration file um, thanks to HackDS now, which is great. Uh, and after the, the let's see, you type in IPM dash I, so IPM dash IPFS. And after that, anything you type just gets pumped straight to the package manager it's using. So we haven't like re implemented like install or anything crazy like that. Um, it all just goes to whichever one you're using. So yeah, it'll support any, any of that. New hot package manager X that comes after Yarn too. So good. All right, we're about out of time. Um, I thought this call was really helpful. It really was helpful for me. Anyway, um, feedback. Welcome. Good question from Andrew in the chat. Oh, does this integration bundle IPFS NPM or does it run NPM install IPFS NPM when you opt in? Uh, the proposed integration right now, I think, installs it. NPM style, but it's a good, uh, where are you going with that question, Andrew? Was there more behind it? I, I was going with that question of, you need to be able to talk to NPM registry to be able to install the, the, the way that NPM works offline in theory. Uh, mostly thinking about IPFS camp and being like, is there a way that if you're, uh, if you're surrounded by people with this thing, can you get that thing? It might be the case that, like, is the node module in, <laughs> like yeah. cached inside the thing, inside the desktop app? But then I guess you've got all the dependencies as well. Like, it gets pretty hairy pretty quickly. Um, and it was mostly like, if you're already doing this, then that's pretty cool. Otherwise, like, yeah. It's an interesting, like bootstrapping Question. case of. <laughs> can you IPFS. can you load IPFS NPM over IPFS in IPFS desktop? Yeah, that's the rudimentary version of like being a, a decentralized package uh, manager. So, <laughs> well, it's like you you it, it comes baked in. Here's the well, so we already do this with the web UI, right? Like uh, companion no longer ships with it, and it just pulls it over IPFS when you first request it. So if we know the CID of a bundled up version of IPFS NPM, then yeah, sure. I guess the only problem is that uh, IPFS NPM has dependencies that aren't compiled during the installation process. Yeah. If those can be removed, then <laughs> yeah, you yeah. definitely just drop it in and have it work. So that, that's definitely a far further future question. Um, all right, we are out of time. If people want to stick around, I will keep talking. If people need to drop off, feel free to do that. But um, the, 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 the remnants of the call are open mic. So if anything had anything they want to share, now would be a good time to say it. Um, shout, holler. Um, one thing maybe uh, mm -hmm. would be thinking back to the why a bit more. Um, maybe we're not going to hit that with the first version and perhaps the longer tail of that is the whole story about the sort of decentralized package registry, um, which it feels like we could enable. So it's like, what, what would be the first prototype version of NPM and IPFS that we could build that would basically allow you to publish a module into IPFS and then fetch it from IPFS. That's an, that to me feels like an interesting story, at least with everything that's going on in the market right now. Um, is that bigger? Am I, am I being too naive? I don't know. I'm asking that question to you all. I'd love to know. <laughs> I would say the, the pull request of Pakote that enables IPNS names as ways to resolve um, documents is, will, will do that. You can totally do that using that. Like the, the interesting things were obviously the speed of IPNS resolving, which is going to improve. The other thing is distributed identity that you can't really, at the moment, there's no decent way of saying. I, I'm making brain, I, I approve this package. Uh, like, so 
me, Dietrich and Andrew had some interesting conversations with Microsoft about their um, distributed identity uh, platform, which is kind of just kicking off and using IPFS to store things, which is quite cool. But like at the moment, like realistically, if you wanted to start typing today and write that program, um, yeah, the identity is kind of the hard thing to solve. At the moment. Indeed. Um, any other open mic segments? Anybody want to share a thing? I have a request for help. <clears throat> I'm looking for a volunteer. I realize that I'm talking to mostly Europeans right now. I'm looking for a volunteer who is comfortable with React that can spend probably only 15 or 30 minutes with me sometime today. Go on, let's do it. Yes, thank you. Tag team. <clears throat> nice. Anybody got anything they want to demo? Anything fun? All right. Then the only thing left to talk about, there were some other things on the doc, but you can look at them at your leisure. Mermaid diagrams changed my life. Uh, so rad. So rad. Where's this? You don't need me to tell you that there are, wow, that's a lot of notes. Thanks, Jim. Da -da 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 -da. Mermaid diagrams, he, he just, you just type out the flow and it gives you a diagram. It's amazing. Anyway. That's... Oh my God, I could do dependency graphs. Yes. I keep, I, so I've been meaning to tell you about this, but I figured you'd see it on this call. Like you just point the thing at the thing and it figures out when you've used the same word multiple times. And it... <laughs> so your dependency diagrams are going to look hot from now on. And of course, the big shout out for HackMD. It is my new favorite way of writing Markdown because... It supports mermaid diagrams in line. You just give it the type, give a code block a type, and OMG, if you want to edit it. Oh, oh, it's happening. It's happening. Yes. <laughs> there you go. See that jam? I think we're all going to be communicating more clearly from now on about our DAGs. Talking of communicating clearly about our DAGs, check out Alan Shaw's IPFS DAG Visualizer Service. I started off working on it, but today he's just made it look beautiful. Um, so you should check it out. There's a link in there. You can visualize all your DAGs and change all of the, so when you add a file, there's a whole bunch of options for how the DAG gets constructed. And it's sometimes a little difficult to understand what those DAG options are. So for the benefit of posterity, pick a file, look into the internet, there he is. Drop him on. 512 byte chunks gives you something like that, but that's in a balance tag. What if it was in a trickle tag? Oh my God. What if the chunks were really big? Then you wouldn't see very much. It's great. Um, play with that to your heart's content. We need the animations back. Uh, like that's the only thing that's missing for me. <laughs> yeah. They were all completely fake though. That's the problem. Um, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, okay, that is the end of this call, but there's one last thing to do. What do we want to talk about next week? Has any got, anyone got a burning issue that they want to talk about? What's top of your mind? I, the, does the in web browsers folks want to pick the topic for the next one? Dietrich, Martin? We can do this offline. I just thought it would be a good habit to get into to make sure that we know what we're talking about next week by the end of this call. In, unless somebody else has another topic, I'm sure we can come up with an interesting one. Okay. Um, so my, my suggestions were simply um, Proto School is getting a lot of work done on it at the moment. Um, and how I guess it will be the center of people's worlds at IPFS camp. Thanks, Andrew. Um, I, I was thinking we should talk about I, Proto School and visualizers and camp content, maybe? That would be something that's important that we should catch up about and do more demoing of. Um, but I'm open to suggestions. Um, let's let's leave it at proto school and camp content for now. But we should talk about it off off this call. Um, all right. Any other business? Uh, big thank you to Victor for coming on the call and telling us how it's going with Open Registries. Um, it's just a reminder to us that like our output should be useful beyond just demoing what IPFS can do. Like if we can reframe IPFS on NPM as something that can feed into open registries, then that would be better. All right.
Tune in next week to the IPFS GUI and in the browser's weekly call. Right on. Get content addressing. See you all later. <laughs>